Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Rudy Space. Today we will discuss about the first law of thermodynamics for a closed system. So actually the first law of thermodynamics is a form of law of conservation of energy adopted for thermodynamic processes. All of us know that as for law of conservation of energy, energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. It can only be converted from one form to another. And first law of thermodynamics is a limited form of that law of conservation of energy and is applicable only to the thermodynamic processes. And we should understand that work and heat are different forms of same entity called energy which is conserved. Energy which enters the system as work may leave as heat and energy which enters the system as heat may leave as work. So when it comes to the first law of thermodynamics for a closed system, there are two cases when it is undergoing a cycle or when it is undergoing a change of state. First I will discuss about the first law of thermodynamics for a closed system undergoing a cycle and then the first law of thermodynamics for a closed system undergoing a change of state. So what is a cycle? After series of processes, if initial condition is restored, then we say that it is said to execute a cycle. And this first law of thermodynamics is on the basis of the famous paddle wheel experiment being conducted by June. I will go into details about the experiment, but to begin with, I will only represent the thermodynamic processes and what he has got, then I will go into the specifics of the experiment what he has conducted. So you can see that x, y are your generalized thermodynamic coordinates. It may be pressure volume, it may be temperature entropy, any combination. And you do have two processes, process 1, 2 and 2, 1. Cycle consists of actually two processes and one two actually represents an adiabatic water transfer process followed by two one which is a heat transfer process. So what he found that the water transfer is directly proportional to the heat transfer. In fact, the summation of water transfer in a cycle is found to be J, J times the summation of heat transfer in a cycle. This J is Joule's equivalent or mechanical equivalent of heat. It can also be represented as cyclic integral of dW is J times the cyclic integral of dQ. Now coming to the mechanical equivalent of heat, it is important because it establishes the relationship between the work and heat units. Units are very very important. So when a comparison is made between two similar things, they must be represented in same units. For example, all of us know that Indian rupee is 100 paise. So either the number of rupees is to be converted into paise or vice versa. Otherwise, the analysis or comparison would be erroneous. You cannot say that 50 paise is more than 1 rupee. So for your reference, I have taken all the three commonly used system, MKS system, SI system and FA system. For MKS system, the value of J is 426.934 kg force meter per kilocalorie. For SI system, J is 4.1868 kJ per kilocalorie. And for FPS system, J is 778.16 foot pound per British thermal unit or 1400.69 foot pound per centigrade heat unit. Now we will come to the Joule's experiment which actually gave this relationship between the work transfer and heat transfer and introduced the mechanical equivalent of heat. So what he has done, he has taken an adiabatic version which doesn't allow any form of heat interaction to take place with the surrounding 
a known quantity of water has been taken the temperature at the initial condition was measured then by means of a paddle wheel some work was done upon the system now the work done upon the system can be calculated by fall up weight you can see the weight pulley paddle wheel arrangement here so by the fall up weight the amount of work done can be calculated after that the insulation was removed and the water inside the vessel is allowed to interact with the surrounding so it was observed that temperature of water has attained a higher value and then heat transfer took place until it attained thermodynamic equilibrium so the heat transfer was also calculated considering the amount of water specific heat and the temperature difference so he found that the work done and the heat transfer are proportional to each other he repeated that experiment 20 times and each time he found the same result he has adopted some other methods and in all cases the ratio between work transfer and heat transfer found to be same so apart from establishing the relationship between work and heat transfer he has also established heat as a form of energy which becomes a foundation for the first law of thermodynamics before joule heat was considered to be an invisible fluid flowing from a body of higher calorie to body of lower calorie then we'll discuss about the first law of thermodynamics for a closed system undergoing a change of state so you can see this example and q is the amount of heat flowing into the system producing w amount of work and here it was observed that w amount of work out of q is converted into work and the remaining amount of energy is stored as increase in energy so you can see q minus w is equal to del e this del e represents the increase in energy not the energy so q is equal to del e plus w and when potential and kinetic energies are absent this reduces to q is equal to del u plus w that means the heat transfer is equal to the change in internal energy plus the work done not in all cases you involve one heat transfer and one work transfer there are cases where multiple number of heat as well as work transfer may take place so this is such a typical example involving multiple number of heat and work transfer processes so here also you can apply the first law of thermodynamics and it will be similar to what is happening when you are having a single heat transfer and single work transfer taking place but here while putting the values of heat as well as work you, the basic sign conventions are to be followed for heat transfer heat transfer to the system is taken as positive and heat transfer from the system is taken as negative but when it comes to work transfer work done by the system is taken as positive and work done upon the system is taken as negative so you can see that w1 is given a positive sign because this is the work done by the system whereas when it comes to w2 it is been given negative because here work is done upon the system similarly when it comes to q1 it is given a positive sign because this is the heat transfer to the system q2 has been given a negative sign because this is the heat transfer from the system so we have discussed in detail the first law of thermodynamics for a closed system undergoing a cycle as well as the first law of thermodynamics for a closed system undergoing a change of state i will take a separate lecture to discuss the first law of thermodynamics applied to flow processes i must extend my sincere thanks to all of you for watching this video please do subscribe to my channel and don't forget to like and comment
on this lecture. Thank you.